This is a review of the uh, X10 decorator style three-way dimmer. So um, comes in a little box like this. I'll go ahead and take it out. Let's go ahead and look at it. Comes with everything you need. You've got the uh, switch right here. Got the uh, wall plates. I have a white and an ivory. And it comes with uh, another little face unit. Um, this is actually one I put in there from another one I had. Here's a white one. So it comes in white and ivory so it can match whatever you have. So to use this, you don't just need the switch. You're going to need a transceiver module like this. So basically this plugs in someplace in your house. You set the house code here. Um, I have mine set to A. Um, if you use uh, more than one of these and you'll have to set each one to different house codes. Anyway, so um, this is what sends the signals to turn this on or off. And to do that you can use any sort of um, device like a, a motion sensor, remote control. I have a remote control here. Um, basically this controls uh, down here the house code and then this is unit code so unit code basically means for example this switch could be um, unit code A, B, C, D, E so this controls A, this B, this C, this D also has some buttons up here to control the um, alarm system I basically use it for remote control so like when I'm sitting in bed and I want to turn off a light then I can do it by pushing this button turn it on or off so you need something to control this switch and you will need a transceiver otherwise the switch isn't really much good by itself so let's take a look at the switch and um, how it looks from the side this is a regular style switch um, a non remote control one you can see it's a lot shallower that shouldn't be that much of a problem I think um, today's electrical boxes have to be at least four inches deep three or four inches deep I'm not really sure but um, I had plenty of room in mind for mine to fit but you know if you've got a really old house like um, I used to have then this probably would not fit or would fit very tightly in the old wall boxes in our old house this house is probably 80 years old they were really shallow um, this would just barely fit so that's just something to be aware of is that the uh, extend switches are a little deeper so you need to set this to your house code and your um, device code whatever that is so to do that you need a screwdriver and I've got one here and I'm going to try to do this carefully. I've taken this off a few times and I have the feeling that if I took it off too many times I might break it. So this little thing comes off and there's a white one and um, the ivory colored one. It's fairly flimsy. I wouldn't want to have to take this off too many times and I'd be real careful because I wouldn't want to break it. Then you've got the rocker part of the switch. So then you get a screwdriver in there and you carefully pop that off. Let's see if I can do this without breaking anything. All right. And there you go. So now you can set the house codes right there. Stick your screwdriver in there and turn it. And you can set the unit codes right there. This one is set to two. Actually, I have a one and a two already. So I'll just, while I'm in here, I'll just set this to three. Um, one thing I noticed is that these switches um, are pretty expensive compared to the regular style switches. So, you know, the decorator switches have this kind of wide, flat paddle switch as opposed to the old style wall switches that have, you know, the little hole right there in the middle. And once I took this apart, I realized that this is just one of the regular switches. And it looks like it has this kind of... Uh, little, I don't know, face plate, mounting plate on it so that you can mount this on top. Of it. it looks like if I unscrewed this, then I could just take this right off and I'd have my regular switch. So the difference in price can be pretty large. Like the regular switch costs like, I think it's like 10 or 12 bucks. Um, it's $20. Um, and I've even seen them a size like 32 for the decorator style. Um, and they don't seem to be any different. They look basically the same switch with this on front so that you can just kind of clip this on. So, um, you know, wait for it to come on sale because you can get three of them for like 20 bucks. That's how I got mine. So, um, they're always having sales. So, just go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the um, white plate back on because that's what I have. And um, you've got this little, it comes with screws and everything. You've got all the screws you need to like attach it to the wall and 
attach the faceplate. It's got this little um, on, off, so you can turn it like permanently off, permanently on. Um, you're supposed to do that when you change bulbs. So I'm going to put this white paddle back on carefully. Try not to break anything because it's the only one I have. And I didn't do it. So you can see this is probably the most finicky part of the whole operation. Alright, so I didn't really slip that into the right spot. Alright, so make sure you slide all that all the way down. And, oh yeah, one thing I should mention. You notice the rocker? It's kind of higher on one side. Put that on top, it just seems more natural. I mean, if you don't, I don't think it's going to be any big deal. Um, I'll go ahead and clip that in there. Then I'll go ahead and clip this on. And now it's ready for me to use. Um, one thing I notice is like this switch. When you turn it, you have a, a definite click. This is like your regular style switch. With this one, you don't. To turn it on, you tap it. It goes all the way up. Tap it again. It goes all the way off. And I'll um, go over to a switch that I have later and then show you how that works. Um, and then, when you want to dim it, you kind of tap and hold. Um, if it's low, you tap and hold. It gets higher slowly. If it's already all the way on, you tap and hold. It gets lower. Um, one problem with these, they will not work with um, the CFLs, the compact fluorescents. I don't know if they'll work with um, LEDs because I don't have any, and I'm going to wait till they drop in price before I get some. Um, there, I know they have dimmable CFLs. I don't know if this will work with it or not. So um, anyway, to hook it in, um, with the old style, not, I shouldn't say old style, with the regular switch, you'll have usually two screws, and you only ha usually have like a black wire attached to the top, and then um, a white wire attached to the bo bottom. And basically what you do is you look at your instructions here and it says connect the blue to the live wire and the black to the lamp. So that means um, blue will be connected to your black live wire and then black to your white um, neutral wire. So these are blue and black. You just uh, attach them with wire nuts, you know, little things that you screw on. The red is for a three-way switch. Like if you had um, a light in a hall and you'd have switches at either end of the hall. You know, when you walk down to the end of the hall, you know, you can turn it off, and then, um, you know, if you can't, somebody came in on the other side, then they can turn it back on. So that's what the red's for. Um, if you don't need it, you just wrap some electrical tape around it or put a wire nut on it, and uh, that's all. It takes about five minutes to install. It's pretty easy. You kind of just look at this, follow the color coding, and um, there it is right there. That's how I have mine set up. Um, follow the color coding. It takes about five minutes to put it in. And uh, plug your transceiver in, and then it works pretty much everything you need to know. Um, so I'll go ahead and I will go to an actual working version of this that I have um, hooked up in my house so you can see kind of how you have to push it and then push and hold and uh, how it works. So let's take a look at that. Okay so here is a X10 remote control switch on this side. This is a standard paddle switch. It's um, connected to a uh, to an outlet so you can turn a lamp on and off remotely. Don't know why this house needs that since it's got ceiling lights, but it does. Um, so anyway, you don't need a remote control like I have here. Um, you can turn it off just manually. So if you lose your remote control, you can still turn your lights on off. You tap it, goes off, tap it again, comes on. If you want to dim it, then you tap and hold so it goes really slow. All right. Tap it again, comes on really slow, now it's on all the way. Um, you notice I showed you um, how the the paddle kind of has a one end or one side that's higher than the other. I put it at the bottom here, I wasn't really paying attention. Um, this is the first one I put in. It'd probably make more sense to put it at the top, but it works either way. You can tap the top too. It works just as well. Um, anyway, so I can control this with a remote control, so I'll do that. So I've got these that correspond to various lights. I actually only have two hooked up. Um, this side is on, this side is off, so it's kind of a two-way switch. So if I hit off, you see lights go off, we'll be in darkness. Hit on, and it goes on. Also, down at the bottom, I have kind of a dimmer function. So if I hit off, since I've just selected that light, and I hold it, it goes really slow. You might notice it getting dimmer and dimmer. You almost might think it's not working at first, but now you can start to see. 
how it's gotten dimmer so I can turn it off and it goes all the way off and we'll turn it back on alright but you notice it only came up to its previous level so now what I have to do is press that other side of that switch there we go and now it goes up to full brightness so um, you might have noticed that when I press these you're hearing a clicking sound so if you listen closely go ahead and pay attention to that that's the transceiver over in the corner it's about I don't know six to eight feet from where we are as you can hear that so that's going to be something like really gets on your nerves you can put your transceiver in another room it'll still work um, I actually haven't um, tried you know going as far away as I could but I have a light outside that I can turn off while I'm inside so I know it, it works at least a good 30 feet um, through a wall so um, anyway that's uh, the remote control and the X10 light switch uh, like I said you know before you can hook up the remote control motion detector they even have um, like a computer software system where you can automate things turning on and off at different times of the day um, anyway that's how it works <laughs>